A car collection like this has got to get your blood racing. But a well curated automotive exhibit can open up a world of possibilities. We discover such a place in a place you might not expect. Just a few miles from where the Atlantic breaks on the shores of Cape Cod is a place all car enthusiasts should seek, the Heritage Museum and Gardens. Every year, people look forward to our hydrangea festival. Um, we have the largest collection of hydrangeas in this region. We're also the largest botanic garden in southeastern New England. Don't judge the 100 acres by its floral cover. Because here, the J.K. Lilly Automotive Collection covers pretty much the history of American cars. Heritage Museums and Gardens was founded in 1969 by J.K. Lilly III in honor of his father, who was a passionate collector. The auto is really important to Heritage because it was the first collection of our founder. A collection of nearly 40 antique and classic cars from Mr. Lilly's collection. Out of this collection of 41 automobiles, he really bought the cream. Cars in the Heritage Collection range in date from 1899 to 1965. They're all American. What we try to show is important, unique designs, automobiles that have had uh, something to contribute to the history of the automobile. And it helps us tell the story of innovation and ingenuity, design and aesthetics, um, taste and culture in American automobiles. So here, among flower festivals, a working carousel, family fun, and exhibits of American art, is a carriage to classic look at the automobiles of America. A car isn't just a car. A car has a story. It might be the story of an owner. It might be the story of the inventor. It might be the story of President Taft, who was the first president to have a fleet of autos in the White House. The fact that it has that provenance, that history, that President William Howard Taft actually rode in that car between 1909 and 1912 is just so special. And of course, that it's steam powered also gives us a terrific story to tell when we talk about different types of power, that in the early 1900s, it would have been really difficult to predict whether gasoline, steam, or electric engines would have been the power that we use today. Every car has a story to tell, and every car in our collection was selected because it's a superior example of its type. Heritage has 41 cars in its collection. We can house them all here in our auto museum, but only about half of them can be on display at any one time. The other half are in our open collection storage area downstairs, where you can look through glass and see all of the cars. Pass the exhibit awaits an exclusive exploration of the employees only area. Uh, it takes about everything I've got. Yeah. What happens behind the scenes when we, um, when we take guests there is that they can take a look at what some of our volunteers, our car guys we call them, are doing. So I'm cranking it on batteries. And what they're doing is getting these masterworks to work again. At Heritage we have a auto reactivation program where we get one car running each year that hasn't been running for some time. The Cadillac wanted the engine to look pretty, so we wanted to get rid of the coils in the way. These cars have been sitting roughly 51 years now, and so uh, there are a lot of unknowns that have to be checked out, and the engines have to be uh, partially disassembled uh, to go through the insides and see if there are any major issues that need to be addressed. It's like surgery. They take it apart, they inspect every piece, they replace pieces that need to be replaced, and they slowly, slowly put their heads together and their expertise together to build it back. The only way we can do that is by having a small group of extremely dedicated, extremely knowledgeable volunteers. Some of them have been working with our collection for 20 years. We, they know our cars well. On one occasion, maybe eight or nine years ago, we did use the priming cups on it. I have four other people that work with me, so we're a team of five. They each bring from their own personal backgrounds different areas of expertise into working on the automobiles. Volunteers are the heart of the maintenance and um, exercising of our car collection. In the nice weather months of the year, they're exercising our cars through the grounds. Did they just say exercising their cars? 
people will be perhaps surprised when they hear the rumble of an automobile engine coming around the bend because one of the things that we are committed to doing on a regular basis is exercising our cars. And if that sounds a little funny to you, um, think about exercising a horse. Or like exercising the 300 horses under the hood of this 1965 Ford Country Squire station wagon with no kids in the way back. About 18 years ago, the museum only had, I believe, three cars in running condition. At this point, out of the 41, I believe our number is now 21 running automobiles. You can come in and look at the cars and appreciate their mechanics and their beauty and their importance in the American story. But seeing a running car outside adds a whole new level, a whole new dimension to people's experience here. And we have decided as a museum that that's important to us. Is we need to occasionally run them, let them warm up, run them through the gears, uh, exercise the brakes, the clutch, all the mechanical components on the automobile. And that way they stay in better condition for future generations to see. And what all generations should be able to see is the best of American ingenuity on the road.